linear programming problem graphical method in this module you will learn solving linear programming problems using a graphical method suppose a manufacturing company makes two types of toys it uses plastic and fiber to make these toys also the company wants to earn maximum profit on selling the toys Let's see this problem and solve it. The question is that a toy manufacturer makes toy cars and airplanes made of plastic sheets and fiber sheets as he has 40 units of plastic sheets and 60 units of fiber sheets. He wants to make a toy car which requires 1 unit of plastic sheet and 2 units of fiber sheets out of the available 40 units of plastic sheets and 60 units of fiber sheets. Similarly, he wants to make an airplane which requires 4 units of plastic sheets and 3 units of fiber sheet. Let's represent the given condition through a table. Now, divide it into 3 parts horizontally and into 4 parts vertically. Write the names of different kinds of material in the first column. To manufacture a car, he needs 1 unit of plastic sheet and 2 units of fiber sheet. So, write the total number of plastic and fiber sheet units a car requires in the second column. Next, to manufacture an airplane, the manufacturing company needs 4 units of plastic sheet and 3 units of fiber sheet. So, write the number of plastic sheet and fiber sheet units an airplane requires in the third column. Finally, as we have been given that the total available unit of plastic sheet and fiber sheets are 40 units and 60 units respectively write it in the last column if you see this problem it can be formulated in the form of lpp let the number of cars be x and the number of airplanes be y if the manufacturing company wants to make x number of cars it requires plastic sheets one time of x that is 1x or x similarly If a manufacturer company wants to make Y airplanes, it requires plastic sheets four times of Y, that is four Y. Also, the company has given that the total availability of plastic sheets is forty units. As it can't use more than this unit of plastic, it can either be less than or equal to forty. So, the required inequality is X plus four Y is less than or equal to forty. Similarly, we can form the next linear inequality as the number of X car requires two X units of fiber sheets and the number of Y airplanes require three Y units of fiber sheets, whereas the availability of fiber sheets is only sixty units. So the required inequality is two X plus three Y is less than or equal to sixty. As this number of units of plastic and fiber sheets can be negative, so two more inequalities will be formed as x is greater than or equal to zero and y is greater than or equal to zero. As the manufacturing company wants to earn a profit of two hundred and fifty rupees on selling a car and four hundred rupees on selling an airplane, therefore the objective function will be formed as two fifty x plus four hundred y. which can be represented as z mathematically the given problem now reduces to maximize z is equal to 250x plus 400y subject to the constraints x plus 4y is less than or equal to 40 say 1 2x plus 3y is less than or equal to 60 say Two, x is greater than or equal to zero. Y is greater than or equal to zero. Say three. The given information has formulated the LPP. So now let's solve this LPP by using the graphical method. As the manufacturer wants to find the total number of cars and airplanes that needs to be manufactured to obtain a maximum profit. Let's draw the graph first by taking the x-axis and the y-axis. What is this point? This point is zero, zero. Next, do you know 
how to represent the inequalities 1 and 2 on a graph? Yes, to show these inequalities on a graph, first, it must be converted in terms of equalities as x plus 4y is equal to 40, say 4. And 2x plus 3y is equal to 60, say 5. Now, do you know how you can represent these equations on a graph? To show these equations or straight lines, we must find at least two points to make a straight line on the graph. Let's solve equation 4. It can be written as x is equal to 40 minus 4y, say 6. Now by using the substitution method, putting the value of y is equal to 0 in equation 6, we get x is equal to 40. Next, put the value of y is equal to 10 again in equation 6. We get x is equal to 0. So, by solving equation 4, we get the required points and these are 40, 0 and 0, 10. Next, let's solve the equation 5 in the same manner as equation 4 has been solved. As equation 5 can be written as 2x is equal to 60 minus 3y, say 7. Then by putting the value of y is equal to 20 in equation 7, we get x is equal to 0 and by putting the value of y is equal to 0 again in equation 7, we get x is equal to 30. So, by solving equation 5, we get the required points and these are 0, 20 and 30, 0. According to the given points, first plot the points on the positive side of x-axis as 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50 at the same distance. Similarly, plot the points on the positive side of y-axis. Now, let's plot the points on the graph one by one. First point is 40, 0, where x is 40 and y is 0. This means on the horizontal line of x-axis, we must go up to 40 and on the vertical line of y-axis, we'll remain at 0. This point can be represented here in the graph. Similarly, when x is 0 and y is 10, it means on the vertical line of y-axis, we must go up to 10 and on the horizontal line of x-axis, we'll remain at 0. So, this point can be represented here on the graph. On joining these two points, it will form a straight line, whose equation is x plus 4y is equal to 40. As soon as we plot the straight line, we write the equation of the straight line along this line. But, recall the original constraint. It says that the value of x plus 4y shall be less than or equal to 40. Can you see the point on this straight line between this point and this point? The value of x plus 4y on this straight line will be exactly equal to 40. Now, what about the points above this line in this direction? It says the value of x plus 4y shall be greater than 40. What about the region inside this triangle where the value of x plus 4y shall be less than 40? So, to find the points which will satisfy the constraint number 1, we must consider those points which lie inside the triangle. As number of units of plastic and fiber sheets can be negative, similarly, when x is 0, y is 20, this can be represented here on the graph. And when x is 30 and y is 0, this point can be represented here on the graph. On joining these two points on the graph, we'll get a straight line whose equation is 2x plus 3y is equal to 60. The value of 2x plus 3y on this straight line will be equal to 60. Similarly, the value of 2x plus 3y above the straight line in this direction will be greater than 60 and the value of 2x plus 3y inside this triangle will be less than 60. So, to find the points which satisfy the constraint number 2, 
we must take the points which lie inside this triangle. Let's shade this region like this. As the number of units of plastic and fiber sheets can be negative, take those points which will satisfy both the constraint 1 and 2, or we can say below both these lines. So we can take this triangle or region as this will not satisfy the constraint number 2. Also, we can take this triangle or region as this doesn't satisfy the constraint number 1. So, can you answer which area will satisfy both the constraints? Now, there is only this region is left which satisfies both the constraints. Also, it satisfies the third constraint as x is greater than or equal to 0. This shows the point should lie here in this region as well as y is greater than or equal to 0. It also shows that the point should lie here in the same region. Let's shade the common region like this. As the number of units of plastic and fiber sheets can be negative, this shaded region is called a feasible region. And the region other than this region is called infeasible region. Can we say that this feasible region shows a bounded region? Yes, we can say since this common region is bounded by constraints. So we can say this feasible region is bounded. Now, if you see, it forms a quadrilateral, say OABC. As every point lies within or on the boundary of the feasible region OABC, it represents a feasible solution. Thus, we can say that the points which lie within or on the boundary of this feasible region represents a feasible solution of the constraints. So, the coordinates of the corner points 30, 0, 24, 4, 0, 10 and 0, 0 are called feasible solution. Now we evaluate Z at each corner point and we get 7500, 7600, 4000 and 0. Hence, the maximum value of Z is 7600 at the point 24, 4. As the point 24, 4 gives the maximum solution, that is 7600, so the point 24, 4 is called an optimal solution. So, the required number of cars is 24 and the number of airplanes is 4. Also, the maximum profit on selling the toys is 7600 rupees. Let's recap. A feasible region is an area defined by a set of coordinates that satisfies a system of inequalities. Every point of the feasible region is called a feasible solution. When the feasible region is bounded, M and M are the maximum and minimum values of Z. Any point in the feasible region that gives the optimal value, maximum or minimum, of the objective function is called optimal solution.